A gravity survey involves the precise measurement of the gravitational pull, g, at close stations along the track using a very sensitive instrument called the gravimeter. Positive deviations from the regional average indicate heavier rocks whereas negative anomalies imply a relatively lighter rock. A grid of such survey line allows us to map the anomalies across the area. The analysis of these anomaly maps give us an indication of the underlying rock types and structures. Magnetic surveys are primarily carried out to calculate the depth of sediments in a sedimentary basin and to locate major structural features within it. The principle used in magnetic surveys is based on the fact that different rocks have different magnetic properties. Those that have relatively higher magnetism cause very small effects in intensity and direction of magnetic fields. These effects are measured and mapped in a magnetic survey. Since most of the magnetic materials are contained in igneous or metamorphic rocks, the relative strength and sharpness of magnetic anomalies is controlled by the depth of occurrence of these rocks. Since these rocks usually constitute basement, the depth below the surface can be interpreted as the depth of the sediments in the basin. The two most commonly used seismic techniques are the reflection and refraction surveys. Both of these techniques use the principle of travel time of sound waves through a formation. In reflection surveys, a small charge is exploded in a shallow well called the shot hole. Receivers, or geophones as they are known, are placed in a straight line on either side of the shot hole. Energy from the blast spreads in different directions and a part of it travels down through the subsurface. Wherever it encounters a change in density of rock, it gets reflected upward and gets recorded on the geophones. This process is repeated across a series of stations along a survey line. In a refraction survey, a similar technique is used except that the distance between the shot hole and geophone is very large and that the travel time of the refracted waves is recorded. Refraction surveys give a large-scale picture of the area as compared to the reflection surveys. Magnetic surveying measures local magnetic field characteristics of a surveyed region. The technology only detects minerals that respond to magnetic fields. Hence, it's used mostly for mineral exploration, but can also be useful for coal and oil and gas exploration. Magnetic surveying provides geophysicists, geologists and exploration managers with a picture of the subsurface mineral makeup of a surveyed area so they can detect specific ore deposits like iron ore and different rock types. The earth is like a giant moving magnet and its molten metal core creates a magnetic field called the magnetosphere that envelopes the earth. Other terrestrial elements such as magnets and iron also create their own magnetic fields that interact with the Earth's magnetosphere. Scientists have studied these interactions and know that different minerals have their own magnetic characteristics. This means an analysis of local above-ground magnetic fields can indicate the presence of underground ore deposits or minerals associated with ore deposits. Geophysicists measure existing magnetic fields using either ground-based or aerial instrument readings recorded by a magnetometer. A magnetometer is a passive technology, which means it only listens for magnetic fields that are already there. For ground-based magnetic imaging, a magnetometer is mounted to an operator via a harness and backpack system. A pole extends out from the harness where the magnetic field measurements are detected. The operator continuously records data by walking along a succession of lines, usually spaced between 5 and 50 metres apart. Once there are sufficient readings to cover the survey area, the data is collected and processed by computer software. Magnetic data can also be gathered aerially, using either a light aeroplane or a helicopter. Both aircraft are rigged with a magnetometer in a fibreglass boom, either extending out the front of the aircraft, as is the case with helicopters, or trailing behind the aircraft, as is the case for aeroplanes. The fiberglass boom prevents the aircraft's magnetometer from picking up the magnetic signature of the aircraft chassis. Readings are taken as the aircraft travels along a predetermined flight path. This method of data gathering yields lower spatial resolution than ground-based magnetic imaging, but covers a much wider area, so more terrain can be mapped. 
Radiometric surveys are run in conjunction with airborne magnetic surveys. Radiometric surveys use a crystal detector which records low-level radiation associated with potassium, uranium and thorium in the near-surface environment, about 20 centimetres below the surface. Whether sourced from ground-based or aerial techniques, the processed magnetic image maps define regions of terrain that may contain magnetic minerals. Careful examination of the data can give geophysicists important clues to what's under the ground and other possible resources that may be present in the surrounding geology.